This story began in relationship advice a year ago, with its latest update being in late September this year. And you tell me, does this title seem like a bad relationship to you? 28-year-old female, my husband, 32, invited a stripper to have a threesome without discussing it with me on our wedding night. Where do I go from here? Obviously to a divorce lawyer, but no, nah, who needs logic right now? Let's see how this plays out, shall we? Let me preface this by saying nothing like this has ever happened before. Which is what left me so utterly flabbergasted as I had to a lot of trust in our relationship. My husband, we'll call him Steve, and I plan to get married in Vegas with an entourage last year, but due to COVID, we got courthouse married last year and did our wedding in Vegas this year for our one year anniversary. Now we like to have fun, so our Vegas plans did include hitting a strip club. The day before our wedding, we were all supposed to go to the club together, but I drank too much and was confined to bed, so my husband and some friends hit the strip club and I stayed at the hotel. Cool, no big deal. Well, he didn't come home until 7 a.m. Still cool, not ideal to get married on no sleep, but if it doesn't bother him, it doesn't bother me. He gets home and starts talking about two strippers he met, one who wants to come to our wedding. We'll call her Stella. I'd call out the red flags, but you were clearly a colorblind dog. <laughs> Actually, we don't scrap that. I don't want to call them a dog. That's a mean word. I just mean to say you're an idiot who clearly doesn't know how to choose a good partner. See, that's less of an insult. She told him she didn't want to be weird and she had a boyfriend, but our wedding sounded cool and she wanted to come. Again, Cool, we had the room as it wasn't a formal wedding, and what's a Vegas wedding without a stripper from the night before? A wedding that lasts? Then he tells me about the other stripper, who he thinks wanted to have a threesome with us because she said his wife sounded hot, and he invited her to the wedding also. I didn't really say much to that. He's mentioned wanting to have a threesome before, and it has never been off the table. But we have only really discussed briefly and vaguely, like, uh, oh, we might do it someday. He also got both of their numbers to send them the wedding info. But that is where things start to go downhill. Because everything's been fine so far, absolutely hunky-dory. For a majority of the time leading up to the wedding, we didn't spend our time separate before the wedding, since we are already married. He is talking about how he really thinks they're going to show up and he can't believe strippers are coming to our wedding. Like he talked about almost nothing else. Not the greatest vibe for a bride on her wedding day who is expecting to be her husband's main focus, uh, but I didn't bother me much at the time because I assumed he was just excited and maybe a little too high on Vegas. So wedding time rolls around and Stella actually shows. She's gorgeous and sweet and we decide we might visit her at the club later that night since I missed out on the night before and was a little bummed. We part ways and head out to take our wedding portraits. And my husband is still talking about Stella, but now it's about what club she will be at and when later that evening. At one point, he even referred to her as his Vegas girlfriend to our friends, which made me uneasy, but I laughed it off as a joke and again figured he was high on Vegas. <sighs> Look, I don't know about you, but I think this woman's just a lost cause at this point. We head to the dinner and husband is sucked into his phone, barely speaking to me and still managing to rush me to meet up with our friends to go see Stella. We meet up with our friends, bar hop for a bit, then head to Stella's club with the expectation that we'll stay for an hour because it's late, everyone is pretty beat. We get there, and after about 10 minutes, Stella comes over to hang out. Steve wants to get a couple's lap dance. I tell him I don't want to, but to go without me. I would prefer to sit back and tip the girls dancing on the pole, as I am very sober. I couldn't drink after partying too hard the day before. And at this point, feeling a little awkward as my husband seems very into Stella. After several minutes of being talked into it by Stella and Steve, I uncomfortably agree and we head back. The dance starts, and I'm that person that doesn't know what to do with my hands, and I'm waiting for it to end. Stella tries her best to make me feel at ease, joking and complimenting me, but it just makes me feel more awkward. Well, that and Steve asking me more than once why I'm being awkward. 
After several minutes, I leave before the dance is over, but tell them to finish and they do. Several minutes later, they come back to the group. Stella perches on my chair and tells me that Steve told her we wanted to have a threesome. Then, she apologetically told me she doesn't do that with customers. Look, I'm mortified for several reasons. One, because he crossed that professional line and it was disrespectful, especially because he knows she has a boyfriend. Two, he made it sound like I was into it. And three, arguably the most important, this man asked someone to have a threesome without discussing it with me at all on our wedding night. And here's the thing too, OP. No doubt Stella actually wasn't on board with it, even if she was single. She came to you and uh, like publicly spoke about this to you because she wanted you to know what he was doing. This wasn't merely a professional refusal. She was calling him out. Very tactful of her too. Well done, Stella. Good job. At this point, we've been here about an hour and our friend group decided to leave. All of us, except my husband. He opted to stay at the strip club alone with the girl who just shot him down for a threesome while all of his friends and his wife went back to the hotel. To be fair, he did ask me if it was okay, and I said it was, because at this point, I don't have it in me to explain to this man all the ways he has disrespected me. He gets home an hour or two later and asks me if I'm mad, and I unleash on him. But I don't get far because he cuts me off by continuously saying, I'm sorry, I'm an a-hole. Until I stop even trying to talk about it. We go to bed and in the morning, he tells me he apologized to Stella and deleted her contact info. We leave for our five day honeymoon and don't discuss it again. Except for once when he informs me that Stella appreciated the apology and said it wasn't necessary and that she wants us to come see her next time we're in Vegas. Great. I spent our honeymoon either stoned, not a healthy crutch, I know, but it was the only thing that made it bearable, which allowed me to occasionally forget the incident, or silently fuming, wondering if I was overreacting, afraid to go off if this wasn't actually as big of a deal as I thought it was, because he obviously didn't think it was. He asked me multiple times if I was okay, every time I gave a half-hearted, Fine. We returned home and I told my best friend the story because I needed to talk to someone about it and I needed her to tell me if all of my concerns were in my head and if I was overreacting. Well, she confirmed that my concerns were valid. I was not overreacting. That night, I confronted my husband and actually got to speak. When I finished, he apologized. He said he thought a threesome was what I wanted because I was excited when he brought it up earlier that day. No, I wasn't. He said he knew he fricked up, but didn't bring it up sooner because he thought I wanted to wait until after vacation to discuss it. Right. Why wouldn't I want this to hang over our vacation like a rain cloud instead of working through it? What should I do? I thought this man was my future. We have dogs together and we're discussing kids. I don't want to give up on it so easily, but I don't know if I can get past this. It's not just what he did in Vegas, it's how he behaved afterwards. So from the perspective of a guy who's been stupid in a relationship before due to pure ignorance, I can see where this man is coming from about it all. Not excusing it, just understanding it. Clearly he's heard her say it one time, and that's caused him to blindly think that was a hell yes the moment he was keen or saw the opportunity for it. His mind completely forgets how important this day actually is as a couple, and just sees, oh, a potential to have a threesome with someone, whoa, I've got to jump at this opportunity. But as we see, look, he seems to have acknowledged, both here and at, after the vacation, that he was wrong. What he did was wrong, he screwed up, he deleted the contact info, well, I mean, kind of a useless thing to do when you say you were gonna meet up again if she was keen. But I can also understand the idea of thinking that, you know, maybe don't bring it up until after we've had a vacation fun and stuff, you know, try not to ruin the mood of what this place is meant to be like for them. But then I also agree, yeah, look, doing that just leaves it lingering around because you guys haven't answered each other's pondering questions that stuck in your mind the entire time you're around each other. Now, one of the top comments were very focused on how tolerant the OP was being here. They're being so passive and then thinking it's their own fault that, well, I'm letting him do these things. And yes, you are letting him do these things, but he's the one who's actually doing them. You can passively an allow a thief to run past you with something he's stolen, but ultimately, they're the one who stole something. You're not equally or more so the bad person in this situation. Your husband still is. As this comment says, your husband is, I'm assuming, of basic human intelligence. 
Anyone of basic human intelligence would know every step of what he did was wrong. He didn't think it was okay because you were being passive. He wasn't under the misconception that you were actually okay. He was, however, aware of how you react to stress and took advantage of that. And yeah, so this part I kind of feel it's getting a bit accusa accusatory? If that's the word. Of the husband, implying that he knew exactly how you'd react and was taking advantage of this situation, blah blah blah. Now look, I haven't read the update yet myself, so maybe they're right to be assuming this about him, but... It does genuinely sound like he's just some stupid, stupid male who was too caught up in the opportunity of the moment he was blind to actually checking in with his partner. Though I do become hesitant to follow such a theory when the OP is getting caught up in that idea that, oh yeah, look, this is just a one-time thing, he'll never ever do it again. Well, no, he will do it again if you keep being passive as you are, and if you keep well, tolerating it as you are. Because she mentions, in the four years we have been together, there has never been any issue even close to this. I always felt like his priority and the only girl in the room. It's just hard to see the person he was that night in Vegas and the person who I have loved for the last four years as the same person. And even though he hurt me deeply, I don't want to hurt him. And you won't be hurting him, you'll be saving him. You'll be helping him. That's what you do with these sort of situations in a relationship. The hurt is the problem itself. You're working on the problem together, you're not fighting each other, you're you're fighting the problem you both have. So just over two months later, there was an update. As harsh as some of you were, you were not wrong. I should have stood up for myself long before we got to the point of him soliciting a threesome. Uh, here's a few things about me that make me, uh, make it more understandable. One, I have long been aware that I have a boundary issues in all areas of my life, and that is something I need to work on. Trust me, this was definitely the push I needed to get the ball rolling and actually seek help. Two, I am also awful at confrontation, and again, I am well aware that I need to work on it. Three, I have experienced trauma in my life and had been experiencing some serious mental health and self-esteem issues before this happened. Four, when I get upset, I shut down completely. Again, I am aware that this is not a healthy response and will be working on it, but that is where I am currently. Five, despite my trauma, I am a naturally trusting person. I am not going to trust you completely until you give me a reason not to, and as hard as it may be to believe, my husband had not given me a reason not to trust him before this point. Six, I don't believe in explaining to people who claim to love me how to treat me well and not disrespect me. If you know and love me, you should know how to act like it. Obviously, for minor issues, they may not know, but I'm sorry, this one seems like a no-brainer. 7. Consent 101 is anything other than an enthusiastic yes, it can be non-verbal, but should be an obvious yes, actually consent, is asking someone to do something after they say no, and until they say yes, actually consent. So if you can't tell, clearly steps 1 to 5 are really just them explaining how, why they behaved as such throughout the whole evening. And I don't know about you, but when you're someone who says you get shut down, you just shut yourself down when this happens, okay, yes, that's an understandable response. I've done that myself a few times. But then also on to step number six, saying if you know and love me, you should know how to act like it. Well, yes, but by that logic, anyone who's been dating for more than six months should never be capable of upsetting the other. As if who you are, both as a couple and as individual people, never evolves or changes or grows in certain ways that are going to cause possible conflict somewhere down the line. To equate it to this, yes, for the last four years, he's come across very respectful and completely prioritizing you, but then to him, after being together for four years, he feels that he's stable enough with you, that he's established a strong enough relationship with you, that if he suggested the idea or brought up the idea of someone to join in just for fun, that you'd be okay with it because you feel secure and comfortable with him. But clearly you don't. Again, I'm not saying what he's done is totally fine and is is super justified. But when you shut down as well, it's kind of a no-brainer that he didn't stop this all immediately. But moving on, she says thank you to everyone that took the time to read this post and reply with love, tough love, and even disdain. You've given me a lot to think about and process in therapy. Yes, I have entered therapy. I have also insisted my husband enter therapy if he wants any chance for this marriage to work. At some point after working on ourselves, if it makes sense, we will come together to work on our relationship to see if it is salvageable. This is why I have asked Reddit. Instead of people in our lives for advice, I have told only my best friend the dirty details of what happened and plan to keep it that way. Because I know that once people hear something like this, it changes how you look at a relationship and if we are going to make it work, this incident is better off not shouted from the rooftops. I have not ended our marriage yet for a few reasons. One, this was not entirely my husband's fault. He can take a majority of the blame, but not all. Two, if I do not at least try, I will always wonder 
What if? Three, something caused him to act this way. Maybe if it was his attraction to another woman, maybe it was a concern he had about me, himself, or our relationship that manifested in an ugly way. I would like to know where this came from, and if it is likely to happen again before making any permanent decisions. Four, something in me thought that all of the disrespect leading up to the pitch of the threesome was acceptable, and I need to investigate why that is to have any hope of having a successful relationship moving forward. For the record though, threesomes and children are off the table until further notice. Threesomes will not be discussed again until I decide it is time. Children will not be discussed until it is deemed we are at a healthy place by a professional, if ever. So there you go, all it took was the looming threat of being pushed into a threesome by your husband to put up some boundaries. Good on ya. So to me it sounds like this is a story of a couple who never really established these boundaries and clear communication from the get-go. Instead, let it be how it was for the last four years, dating a man who, clearly, never developed any sense of self-awareness. But hey, they've gone to therapy, they're, they're taking more proactive movements, so... How did it all go? Well, ten days ago, there was an update. And you might notice that little extra word there in the title. Yeah, I don't think it worked out. Almost a year ago, I turned to Reddit following the most embarrassing moment of my life to open the door for even more embarrassment. The masochist in me got positively tingly at the hateful comments, and continuing a relationship that everyone on Reddit, myself included, knew was doomed. No amount of supportive comments could stop me from being terrified at ending my relationship. We obviously aren't happy, but we are damn comfortable. Too comfortable. We have three dogs, we have a house that he owns in only his name, and I have a good bit of debt and a job with no health insurance. I was too overwhelmed to face all of those challenges and come to terms with my marriage being over, so I gave up the little self-respect I had and stayed. I tried to work on my issues, work on us, and see if our relationship is salvageable. Spoiler alert, and I'm sure this will shock you, it isn't. There is just no shaking the feeling that he just doesn't really care about me, beyond what I represent about him to other people. He's happy to sing my praises about being his pretty, cool, laid-back wife to anyone who will listen. Yeah, motherfuckers, you called the cool girl thing? Congrats. Except me. To me, he is almost exclusively critical. I pretty much feel I am failing. We have rarely had intimacy, and when we did, it felt selfish and disconnected. Now, he loves being a romantic for the sake of a story to tell, but you won't catch him caring about my needs unless I'm blowing up and demanding two of my least favorite things. And then suddenly, there's a sense of urgency. He was all ready to do couples counseling after Vegas to save our marriage, until I stopped being actively mad all the time. We never made it to a single session. God damn it, dude! You had an easy out! Go to therapy! Wow! I regret explaining my theory as to where you were coming from, mate. You were... God damn it, why? Why do I waste my time? The one time I worked up the nerve to bring it up, he changed the subject as soon as he could, and we haven't discussed it since. When I decided to stay, I told myself I would give it a year. If I wasn't happy and feeling like we were making progress, then I was done. Our anniversary is in just over two weeks, and I am no more ready than I was to face the challenges this will bring, but a deal is a deal. So here I am, asking for encouragement and advice. Especially if you know anything about divorce and PA, because this Schmidt is overwhelming. And while we're here, we'll check the comments. People going straight for offering a little divorce to-do list. That's cute. Tick them all off as you ruin each other's lives. Not really ruin. At this point, you're kind of just saving each other's lives, if anything. Another point to make. Opie's husband sounds self-centered and is using her to fill what he views as the role of his wife, rather than offering a genuinely caring, loving two-way relationship. Not at all a healthy relationship or a happy life for OP. Possibly, as soon as they were married, he felt that he did not need to put in any more effort as he had wooed her to be his wife, and that is why he might not have behaved so blatantly disrespectful before. Also, this might be the occasion that has opened Opie's eyes and she had not previously noticed his selfishness. Which I think is a very notable thing from all the previous stories. Yeah, she was giving him the benefit of the doubt almost the entire time. And so maybe this wasn't a guy who was genuinely just ignorant of the whole situation and was just picking up a wife being completely fine with everything he was doing so he kept doing it. No, I, yeah, it really does seem like, especially a year later, if he was someone who did genuinely want to do this with her or like be about her and have this her included in the threesome idea, then he would be going to therapy. He would be trying to keep this relationship. No, no. 
He's the kind of partner who's like a pillow princess in every avenue of a relationship though and not just the bedroom. I put in 10% of my effort so you have to put in the rest of the 90% for me. Yeah, it is good that OP is realizing this about him now and is preparing to leave rather than wasting years of her life with him. Hopefully the benefit of this failing marriage is that she will grow stronger in her boundaries. I really hope she does leave and eventually ends up with the right person next time. For now onto something far more wholesome. Featuring an OP who's a guy who just can't comprehend when people are nice to him. I hired an escort once, but we keep meeting? Hey guys, I'm a 29 male and I could use some advice here. I have been single since I was around 23. I have little to no desire to be in a relationship and don't have any plans on getting married or having a long-term girlfriend. I like being alone, especially due to my job. This, however, has raised questions from friends and family about my love life, especially since my younger brother is married and has kids. Well, this started in September when my best friend since middle school got married. I was his best man and he offered to set me up with one of his fiancé's single friends. I had no interest in this and assured him I would have a date. Not wanting to add any more complications in life, I decided to hire an escort who we will call Angie, who's 27, purely to keep up social expectations. We came up with a backstory that she was a friend of mine from a car club that I'm part of. Wedding weekend happened and overall it went great. I had fun and from when we talked, Angie had fun too. The weird thing is, she still stayed in touch, mainly through text. The first instance was about three weeks after the wedding when she asked me what I was doing over the weekend. I told her I was going on a cruise, cars not a boat, with my car club and she asked if she could come. I told her I wasn't looking to hire an escort for a car club event, but, but she insisted that it was free and that she wasn't working. Since then, she calls me in the evenings to talk and has accompanied me on outings and events. Uh, during my job-mandated therapy sessions, I told my therapist about this, and he said that Angie may like me romantically? Now, I'm not insecure or anything, it's just that physically, I am fit, but I'm short at 5'7". That, and I generally have a colder and more stoic personality towards people that aren't close to me. Angie, on the other hand, is taller than me, 5'6", but 5'9 in heels is gorgeous and has a very bubbly personality, so I put the idea of her liking me to bed. So really what I'm confused about is why she keeps wanting to hang out for free. Uh, don't get me wrong, Angie is a great woman to be around, but could this be a tactic used by escorts to keep men on the line, or could she be in trouble? Any advice here would be great, guys. So with that proudly stoic personality, immediately assuming the worst of this stranger that you're not really a stranger with anymore, mate, let's be honest, you're kind of an acquaintance at the very least. But let's all move over to the update where a lot of things begin to escalate. Is there shanking? You'll just have to see. Hey y'all, so first things first, I'd like to thank everyone's advice and kind words and those that DM'd me. I'd like to give a little more background and respond to some of the reoccurring comments I saw. So one, I'm not insecure about my height or looks. Shout out to the short dudes comment thread. Most couples I've seen there has been a minimum 3 inch height difference between the guy and girl, so I thought this was the norm. I now realize that's dumb. Two, lots of people asked why I'm robotic and if I had a bad previous relationship or if I'm aromantic. So it's not that I'm robotic. In general, due to my personality and a part of my past that I walked away from, I'm pretty cautious with new people, and any sort of vulnerability from my side is a no-go. I.e. talking about my feelings, showing sadness, etc. Aside from my best friend, I sometimes get sick if someone asks me to talk about it. Now, I might be aromantic, but not sure. I always hated dating and the whole dance you have to do to move things forward. I dated years ago because it was normal, but eventually decided I wasn't going to live my life for anyone but me, and left it. Three, I am not rich. Sure, I make decent money, but with the cost of living around here, I'm pretty much just middle class. Four, as for Angie, she started escorting during the pandemic since she got laid off from her waitress job. She did it to pay her way through nursing school. She stopped it back in December. I knew she left the service, but I don't know, at the time if she was still moonlighting independently, which she wasn't. Well, she didn't sleep with her clients, but even if she did, I wouldn't see it as that much different from my hookups or one night stands. On to the update. So I read a lot of your comments about how Angie might like me, and I took the night to think about all our time spent together without thinking of her as an escort. In the end, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. I had the realization of, the flippant 
She was hinting the whole time. And what made me realize was that after around December or January, we started doing more mundane activities. Like, for example, I was taking my niece and nephew mini-golfing, and she wanted to come along for that. Or how every other Friday she would come over, or we'd just get high weed, and watch random movies and videos after getting the munchies. Or how for the past month or two she'd give me a peck on my cheek after we hung out. I thought she was just being nice! As for my feelings, I don't know, I've never had a crush or romantic feelings for anyone, so I wasn't sure what it was supposed to feel like. But what I'm sure of is that I like having Angie around, and when she's not, I kind of miss her, I guess? So, Friday comes around, and we're baked and watching Lion King. The movie gets to the part before the stampede that kills Mufasa, and Angie starts crying. I asked her if she's okay, and she said that the coming scene always made her sad. Then she kinda just moved over and put her head on my shoulder. The scene gets over, but she puts her blanket over me and stays there for the rest of the movie. Credits roll, and she doesn't move. I kinda had a frick it, just send it moment, and lightly kissed her on the head. She kissed me, and things kind of escalated from there. We had a long convo in the morning, and she said that back at the wedding, she genuinely had a good time, and didn't feel like she was working. And that's why she asked to hang out again. As we started hanging out, she started developing feelings, since I kind of just treated her as I would anyone else. <laughs> I didn't think this was a big deal, but for her it was. And a lot of things that I did that I saw as common courtesy, giving her my coat, helping her into my car, etc., were acts of kindness in her eyes, even though that's just how I was raised. So essentially, it seems like she's experiencing what a lot of the guys misinterpret when a girl's just being nice to them. Like, oh my god, this person of the opposite sex, they're making me feel, like, important to them, or, like, they care about me. I must date them! This situation's okay, though, because the OP wasn't even aware of it or wasn't even aware of their own feelings. It's not like OP actually hated her or was extremely uncomfortable with how close and friendly she was being. When she started working as an escort, she lost the few friends she had. And any time she tried dating, people would sexualize her when they found out what she did. So outside of her few escort friends, she had no one. When she finished school in December and became a pediatric nurse, she started re-evaluating her relationships since she was no longer an escort, and she felt that I was one of the few people that treated her kindly, even as an escort. She wanted to continue seeing me. I was a bit confused by what she said next, but she said that she felt safe and calm with me, which I didn't really grasp, but accepted. I told her that I liked her, but due to my past and personality, I might not be the kind of man she wants to be with, but she shot that down immediately and told me I was acting stupid. We decided that it really wouldn't make sense to start over and start dating since we've spent the past few months together and we kind of just picked up where we left off. So we pretty much became girlfriend and boyfriend that day. Now the past two weeks have been really good. While I'm still getting my bearings straight and processing my feelings, Angie has changed quite a bit. She's a lot more emotional and likes being held a lot. Like, if I'm just laying on the couch, she'll walk in and yell, Huggies! and lay on me. It's a bit different for me, since any sort of intimacy outside of sex is completely foreign, but I guess I do like it. She's also done a lot for me. Like, one time, she slept over and I had to throw in a suit for a meeting the next day. I wake up and go in for a shower, and when I come out, not only is my shirt ironed, but she had a pot of coffee ready and a lunch bag made. Like, who the frick just does that? Someone who likes you, bro. <laughs> oh my I, I feel kind of sad for this dude. Like, I don't mean that these things are the bare minimum you should give to a partner. Like, no, those are nuanced things. You don't need to make your partner lunch or brekkie or iron their clothes for them as a standard of being a good partner. You can just respect them as an equal human being. That's the minimum. But just the fact that them just being generous with the morning like this blows their mind. A few days ago, I even met a few of her escort friends. And guys, seriously, don't judge anyone for what they do because her friends were some of the nicest people I've met. While I used Reddit, she turned to them for advice about me over the months, and they were all nearly in tears when they heard about us finally getting together. I told my family and friends that I was dating Angie, and they all laughed since they thought we had been dating since before the wedding. So some of your guys' jokes and comments about her being my girlfriend were right, I guess. So yeah, things are great between Angie and I. I know I got some work to do to transition into a relationship, but I'm taking it one step at a time. 
Angie has been really patient and understanding through all of it, and even though she's told me she loves me, she told me to only say it back when I'm ready, and I mean it. But seriously, thanks for all of you guys' helps with this. I doubt things would have ended up like this if it wasn't for you guys. TLDR, we're together now. How do you think this might fare, though? It's a sweet thing that he's experiencing. I'm very happy for him. But it is kind of saddening to know that what was real motivating for this woman to be with him was just because he was being nice. But at the same time, I feel like, if anything, his lack of understanding with love and companionship and her clear, desperate need to have some sort of companionship weirdly enough, might actually be really good for each other. Because he'll learn to be more bonding and she'll learn to be patient with that sort of thing. Hopefully it's a good middle ground they find each other on and yeah, all the best of their relationship. Let me know what you think though down below. Overall, we'll end things there. Thank you as always for watching these videos. Again, sorry if it's a, just a speed read of sorts and not as much of an engagement as it usually is today. Busy week for me ahead. Either way, hope you be good. Love your face. See you next time. Bye-bye.